Uh, thank you, Senator Wyden. Uh, when I first arrived in this building a couple years ago, Senator Klobuchar, one of the first things she brought up was the cost of pharmaceuticals, drug prescriptions for Amer the American people. Well, this is the beginning of the end for Americans getting the short end of the stick from pharmaceutical companies peddling prescription drugs. For years, we've all been paying much more than those in other countries pay for the same drugs. But now, Medicare is taking the first step towards ending that stranglehold on life-saving drugs. Let's be clear, this is not some unfair assault on global drug companies. Rather, this is a transition that's going to give Americans the same opportunity to afford life-saving drugs as others in other countries are given. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, the U.S. spends far more than any other industrialized country for prescription drugs. From getting charged $150 more for Xarelto, which reduces the risk of coronary artery disease, to getting ripped off by paying $1,600 for Enbrel, an arthritis drug. Eliquis, a very common blood thinner and one that I have occasion to use myself, prevents blood clots, but costs an extra $500 and $514 out of pocket for Medicare enrollees in Colorado. In Germany, it's only $96. It's five times more in the United States. Why should we pay more than, than Germans and Canadians and the Swiss? What possible rules of common sense should permit drug companies the right to charge us many times more than what the rest of the world pays for the same drugs? Part of the answer is that up until now, we've let them. Medicare, the largest buyer of prescription drugs in the United States, has never been allowed to negotiate the price of drugs with pharmaceutical companies. And as Senator Wyden was making painfully clear, the losses to the American people have been substantial. Until now, Medicare has had to accept whatever price Big Pharma dictated, even when Medicare knew we were subsidizing the rest of the world. Well, that changes today. Thanks to the in Inflation Reduction Act we passed last year, Medicare finally has the ability to negotiate with Big Pharma and get us a fair price for these drugs. Medicare will take the 10 most expensive drugs each year and negotiate their prices down. But the impact goes far beyond the impact just on seniors or just for those 10 drugs. Greetings, friends. I have breaking news to share with you this Friday. Congressional lawmakers are pushing to boost Social Security payments, but this would be through a new method, and it would include changing the way the cost of living adjustment is calculated. Analysts say this would benefit millions of seniors and retirees. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to learn more about this. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community, I will be announcing new winners every Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. At the end of today's video, I will be announcing the winners, so please make sure that you do stay tuned. American retirees are expecting more than a change in the weather as October approaches, bringing with it the announcement of the highly anticipated cost of living adjustment to Social Security benefits. The SSA raises benefits every year to bring them up to speed with inflation. The boost is calculated using the average inflation rate in the third quarter with an index called the CPIW. But that could change as progressive legislators push for a switch to an experimental index that they argue is more accurate. In response to the waning purchasing power of Social Security payments, which average out to $1,800 a month for retired workers, two bills have been introduced by Democratic lawmakers. It is a 2023 Fair COLA for Seniors Act and the Social Security Expansion Act. Both include proposals to calculate the COLA using the CPIE. 
It is a different metric that measures price changes, specifically based on the spending patterns of Americans 62 years old and over, according to sponsors of the bill. The CPIE more closely tracks the expense of older individuals by taking expenses like prescription drugs into account. At first glance, changing the index used to calculate the COLA may seem like an obvious fix. The advocacy group, National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, which advocates for sweeping increases to Social Security benefits, said in a 2022 brief that the index's adoption is long overdue. But many economists also say it is not nearly so simple, and that legislators who want to expand the Social Security may be pushing for the CPIE on a political basis. Mark Goldwyn, the Senior Vice President and Policy Director for the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget, told reporters that the CPIE does not always capture price changes at the same rate as overall inflation. For 2022 and 2023, he says a COLA calculated using the CPIE would have been significantly lower than the actual one based on the CPIW. Under the CPIE, retirees would have received about an 8% benefit increase this year, as opposed to the 8.7% that the Social Security Administration ultimately calculated using the CPIW. The Committee for Responsible Federal Budget has been sounding alarm bells, warning of the depletion of the Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund. A recent analysis from the nonprofit predicts that without a solution to the pending funding shortfall, the fund's reserves will run out by the year 2033 and result in an immediate benefit reduction of $17,400 for the average newly retired dual income couple. After a stretch, of better-than-expected economic data in August. Federal Chairman Jerome Powell warned that a resilient U.S. consumer could prompt the central bank to raise interest rates once again. But less than a month later, the Fed may have a new engine to help slow consumer spending and the U.S. economy in its fight against inflation, and that is gasoline. Gasoline prices rose steadily in August pushing up costs for both consumers and producers of goods. Economists say this could be good for the Fed, even if it means an uptick in headline inflation in the immediate term. While there are concerns that rising energy prices could spark price increases across a number of other goods and services, and therefore send core inflation higher, the risk may not be as significant as initially thought, gas prices also drove higher than expected growth in August retail sales. The House also appears no closer to funding the government and averting a shutdown than they were when lawmakers left over a month ago for a weeks-long August recess. House Republicans have been embroiled in gridlock over government spending, with hard-right lawmakers refusing to compromise on conservative demands that have a small chance of passing the Democratic-controlled Senate. Moderate Republicans have expressed frustration at the holdouts for their refusal to compromise and their lack of clarity on their demands as the September 30th deadline creeps closer. So, dear friends, what do you think Republicans should do? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Well, my awesome friends... That is the end of my daily stimulus update video. Thank you, friends, for being part of this community. Remember that every Friday, I will be announcing winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. So please make sure that you enter these weekly giveaway, friends, by clicking and liking several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. The winners of today's Walmart gift card giveaway is Teresa Davis and Juanita Cosillo. 
Congratulations, my dearest friends! To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or you could message me on my Facebook page. Thank you, friends, and have a wonderful and very blessed Friday.